Hello and welcome to Revit 2020. This is a basic, uh, basic tutorial on the usage of it. So if you can see here, this model there's already a preloaded model for you to look through on how uh, architectural project should be constructed, con constructed structural project and a sample system. <clears throat> so if you can see here. The uh, Revit is basically built. Uh, is is uh, is basically having this model and a family. So model is where you build your project, and family is the component, furniture component where you put it into your model. So let's start with doing a new project. So you notice that there's different different template for different specialists specialties field so in today's in this session we'll be doing architecture so we select architecture we select a project template so if you are a if you are, if you want to do a structural you should select a structural template either if not uh, you are doing architecture you should select an architectural template so if you see here you have a ribbon tag on top this is all your component for you to build your architecture model there's also a structural and steel in case you want to add the model in. And you see you have a property tab here and you have a project browser browser. So this is where all your views will be located at. So uh let's build a wall. If you notice where if you cover your cursor over it, this is you see a description of the wall and you see a shortcut to it. So all of the component in Revit, you have a shortcut to it. So in this case, for wall is a WA. So if you click on it, you have a chain tick. So with this chain chain tick, you'll be able to create multiple wall. And you have this location line. So this is where the wall will end up. So in this case, we want to have the wall facing the exterior. So we have a we have it at finish face exterior and at the right and the left here you have the height this is eight meters so let's have a brick wall let's change our brick wall and the properties here to a uh, outside brick facing so you notice that not now that I click on this working environment there's this temporary dimension so this shows me how how long I want to build my wall and there will be a degree. So if I were to move it left and right, you will be able to show me the exact degree of how much, how slanted I want my wall to be. But for now, I want to make it a straight line. So now you notice that as I'm doing this third wall, there will be this temporary dimension that shows that I'm actually aligned with the initial point of the wall that I have built. So if I click on it, I can easily go up and there will be this pink box here which will close off the wall for me. So you know so now that I've done a wall I want to view it view the I want to have a 3D view of the wall. But notice that I do not have my 3D view here. I can actually go up here, there will be this small little house, this is the default 3D view. If I click on it, I will go to this 3D view. And you notice that over here at the right hand side of the project browser, there will be a new 3D view created. You can see here. So, okay, to move around the model, I can actually press on the middle and I can move it around left and right. Likewise, if I were to click on this, I can also move it to the point that I want to see. If not, if I want to have a different view, I can press on my shift and then I click on my middle mouse button and I can move it up and down. So, let's, uh, let's, build, a, let's build a plot. So I'm gonna build a floor at level one. So notice that 
I'm in this floor creation mode. So in Revit, you have whenever you try to set, create a component, you will always be entering a creation mode. So you will be able to draw using all these functions that's available here. <coughs> so for the floor, it's already pre-selected. You'll be selecting the wall to build your floor. So if I click on it, it will automatically close off. If you can see here, I do not have to draw. I just need to click on the wall and then it will be a, it will, the software itself will outline the wall for me. <coughs> but since I do not want to have a generic floor, let me change my floor. So I can have a concrete and domestic floor. If I click OK on it and I go to the 3D view, I can actually view that I have created a floor over here. <coughs> Likewise, I should I can also create a floor. I'm still in and also create a floor at level 2. So I can actually use a line to create my floor at level 2. So I just click on it and just click on it, the pink box just now. And if I click on it, okay, I go to my 3D view, move it. I actually created a floor with a space over here. So you can actually create if you double click on it, you can actually enter this creation mode. You can change it as you like. So as for now, I just want it to be like this. Now let's let me go to level two. So let me create a ceiling here. So you if you hover to it, each of them you'll be able to have a brief help on the creation of the city. So let's click on it. So now this is automatic, automatic city. Or we can sketch it like what we do for the floor. So if you click on here, there will be a warning because nothing, you cannot see anything here. So let's go, let's go to the 3D view. If you see, this is my ceiling. So if I click on it, you can see my floor is beneath it. So notice that when I'm doing my ceiling, I'm doing it from level 2. I'm not doing it from the third level or the roof level which I have not specified. So if you were to actually click on this ceiling, you'll notice that here there's a height offset of level 2.6 meter. So this, this means that the ceiling is created at level 2 offset from that level 2 level level 2 height 2.6 meter height over here so you are creating a ceiling for the level 2 at this level so the correct because Revit do not have layer we actually need to we actually need to put in the level. So to put in the level, we only can put in the level at the elevation. So we go, we, we have to go to the elevation view, architecture, at your far right, there's a datum, it's this level. So if you click on it, you you have to, you want to align your level to the existing level that the, the software have created you notice that there's a temporary line here. So this is, you, you also have an X, a thing X mark here. So you want to create it uh, in line with the existing level. So you click it, this shows a level three. You move it to the right. And your there will be a temporary line created at the far right here. So you click OK, you'll notice that there's a padlock here. This means this, three are locked together so since i only want to create a two story uh, structure let me rename this into a roof so i just click double click on it i type a roof in and i click ok you have a, a message telling me that i want to change all my view to this 
to rename my all my view. Click OK on it. And you notice on my right, my level 3 has changed to roof and my ceiling level 3 also has changed to roof. So if I go to this view, so in Revit 2020, you, I'm not sure why I cannot do a roof through my roof view. If I were to actually click here, I will not be able to view it. So I'll just build it using the 3D view. So to build the roof, you just click on the roof. It's as simple as that. Click, click the roof. You have this window from asking you where you want to move your roof. So you want to create your roof at this at your roof level. So you just click OK, and you have this overhang. So let's change my roof to a warm timber roof. So with this overhang, it means if for example, I put 500 millimeters. My roof is actually extending 500 millimeters away from the wall. So I just click on my roof and click OK. This is my, I just attach my wall to the roof. So this is actually my heat roof. So Notice that my roof is very, the slope angle is very high. So I can actually change it. If I click on it, I'm in this property selection mode. It shows that my roof is 30 degrees. So I can actually change it to 20 degrees and it will reflect back to my model here. So, but if I want to change my this hip roof to a gable roof I can just edit footprint or double click on it just click OK again or I double click on this or either I click the footprint I double click on it I enter this creation mode so I just remove this defined roof slope all right and the left I click OK this then I'll get a gable roof So if I, if I want to change the roof slope, I can also change it up and down with this arrow here. Just click on it and I move up and down. And as I move up and down, the slope percentage degree here will change. So if I want to change it to a flat roof, I can just remove all, miss, all this roof definition. And I'll end up with a flat roof. <coughs> Let me for now I want a hit a gable roof. So I just click two of them and I'll have a gable roof. <coughs> okay, so you might one thing is you might encounter that your level is inside your roof, so one of the ways is for example, let me drag this in. If you actually found that your datum level is inside your building, you want to move it up, one of the ways is you click, you drag. And when you notice that there's this blue outline, <coughs> you release and you can see there's a pink circle here. So you just move it out of your model. So to make to create a door, just simply put it here, and you can just click it into your model. For the window, you can do it the same. So let's add an door. So this is to demonstrate that Revit. This is to demonstrate that if you are in a rush, and you just change change it uh, change the door to something that you want let's say you want to make it into a three meter height or oh, if you click ok on it you're actually doing something wrong here because this is a three meter door but the description is at 
meter height so you're not supposed to do that so to undo it you can control z you're actually if you want to make a different type of drawing you're actually supposed to duplicate it put it at 3000 millimeters okay and then just change this to 3000 millimeters for the height so now you have a door with a 3 meters height with the correct property name for it and if you were to click it down you still have this will be here now if i were click if i were to click the existing preloaded door in, in this template i'll click it down i can actually change it to 3 meter since uh, my window is not aligned there's a way to align all my window so if i click on here uh, there will be a modify align tool so there's multiple window for me to align i should click on this to align it so let me click on the window hub now i want to align this window for all my window the same height so i just click on this top side i click on this and notice that i'll have this padlock so because i'm in this multiple align mode i need to always specify which height of the window the side that i want and to align the next window so let me show you if i to align this next window i need to click on the window that i have and click on the next window and i can lock it click on the existing window and i lock it so notice that if i were to click on this window this three padlock will be showing so this pad, three padlock is showing the constraint for this window if i were to move it up and down they are constrained they are height constraint so notice that i can still move them left and right so one other way to align them and restrain them is to using the align dimension tool here which is a measure align dimension i click the same i'll have to click the same side to align them so currently we are at this dimension so this is another way to align it there's actually a eq here which is an equal distance dimension if i were to click on it these two window will be equally distant with these two as their constraint so if i click on it you'll be properly equal distance so i can actually toggle it off and as you can see here this is all equal distance and i can also lock lock, lock this window together <coughs> so one thing is uh, if you guys were to lock your properties project browser you can easily get it get it back by right clicking on, on your this working template your browser go to your browser click on your this project browser you'll get get back your view tab here likewise for your properties you right click click on the properties so some of you if you have installed a different country version of Revit you might want to change your if you might want to change your unit to millimeters you have to go to this manage and you go there's will be you go to this setting and there will be a project unit so if you click on it this will you'll be able to change your that your units to millimeters so this is if you have installed a us 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 rabbit okay okay let's just hang for a while okay so let's do a let's do a staircase so we actually go to architecture there's a circulation here you can do a staircase with this 
So you will see here there's an actual run width, there's an offset and the location line. So like the wall, this it is run center means if I were to click here, my staircase will be created in the middle of the line. So you will notice that I can create a maximum of 22 rises. So if you look at here, this is the staircase that's pre-selected. It will be at a 190mm max riser, 250mm going. So going is the width where, where your footstep and riser is, how high the steps are. So you see the constraint that the staircase is being made from level 1, which is we are here level 1, and to level 2. Hence, that's why we are at, at this level 1 view, we are making the staircase. So there will be different staircase that we can select but for now we will be creating a straight staircase and it will be, it will be automatically created and you will be able to automatically create the landing since this is thick we do not have to click the manually build our landing so since we are at level 1 the base the constraint is we will be building this staircase from base level 1 you just click on it and we will create a maximum of 12 riser because this is in according to the building law. So in building by law, we can only create 12 staircase, 12 flight of staircase, and then we will require a landing. So we we'll create 12, and then if we were to go down, we can, oops, sorry, create. 12 staircase and we will have some space for the landing and then we can create the rest of our staircase so now we click ok our staircase will be created so let's go to level 2 to see our staircase so we can actually edit the boundary and move this to our staircase So that this is correct. Okay, now we, we would like to view this staircase. So one of the ways is you are putting in camera. So with camera view, if you put the camera view at level 2, it's like giving you a perspective of taking a picture, taking a picture of this area. So you can see that I have my staircase created here and I have an opening here. So one of the things I notice that oh I have a space here but this is a very dangerous place without railing. So I actually need to, need to put railing here because if this is to be if this is to an actual construction drawing, if there's a danger of height, I need to put a railing. So to put a railing, this is very simple. You go back to level two. <coughs> you can click on the railing. You have to click on this railing. You see a highlighter. Click on it. You can edit your path. So you'll be at. You will notice that you'll be at this railing. So you just add the line to it, and you click OK. We go to this view, a railing will be created for this opening. So let's rename this to something meaningful. This is staircase. Staircase view. Let's add another railing to the other side. So we select this, edit the path. Okay. okay, this is an error, but we have been, we are able to do rolling for the other side also.
Okay. So let's add some wall to this level one. So now that I have some wall, let me make a new view with a detailing. So I should name this, rename this as level one detailing because I want to pack the room to indicate what sort of room this is. So I have I'll be in this architectural tab. I just click on this room. I'll be able to tag the room. So if I want to tag, if I want to separate the room and tag it twice like in this area, I want to have this area as my walkway and this area as my living room. I can actually just use this room separator to separate this room into two tag. So by just clicking on this and putting a line between this can put two room tags here. So all this tag that I have put, we should always rename it to something meaningful. So this is about this is the way that it is. You want to rename all the things that you do to something that means something. Kitchen. So all this number isn't very useful. We have this name, but we will want to know the area. So let we can actually edit the type here. We can have it show area. So by having this, you'll be able to know how big this area is. Okay. The next thing is we want to color this. We want to make a legend and color this area. So we can go to analyze. You can have the we go to this color view. There will be this color view legend. So we want to fill up all this and click on the area. You notice that this is, there will be a window from up. So if you were to just click OK, then nothing will be generated because if you see here, the space type, they are saying space. So you are actually, you didn't specify any space. So you will not generate anything up. So you want to click on it, you have these three space type that you want to color it and legend it. So because we have already specified that we have already typed and specified the rooms, you want to click create, you want to select the room for the space type. Now there's a color scheme. So we want to click into it and we want to have different color for our different names that we have. So we click on the different type of color for our name. So we click OK on it. And Revit will generate the color for this tag that we have put into. Okay. So you notice that there will be different different color for the different room that we have. For the different name of the room that we have created, but we can actually change. Yeah, the software itself has already generated different color for the room that we have but we can actually change it by clicking on it we can edit the scheme so if you do not like the color you can move it to something that you like Let's say red i apply it okay it will change to red so if you move to level one you will have all your detailing so everything that you do you will reflect to all the you'll be reflect to the model 
so you want to create different model for the things that you do so this is all the detailing that you have so if you were to duplicate this view but without the detailing you have another level one but with color on it so i can just quickly delete it okay so let me add some door to it Okay, so if you notice it here, if you click on this door, you can actually flip it this way. So it's very easy if you were to use it in AutoCAD. You have to redraw the door again, but in Revit, you just drag and move the door as you like. So if we move this back to level 1, the door is created here also. Okay, on to the component. So this is where you put all your furnitures in. So pre the this test is already preloaded in all the project template that we have. So click over here, you created a desk. So if you want to have more component, you actually have to load this into your project template. So you have to go to your edit type, you have to load it. So if you install it, it see like I have, have you'll be if you have installed Revit in C, then you have to follow this path, program data, Autodesk, Revit, libraries, and Malaysia. So but you might not be getting Malaysia. So if you have in selected the country for the Revit that you have as US, you have to select. You will not have Malaysia, there will be a US here. Or you have selected US, there will be a US here. So you might not be the same like what I have, which is Malaysia, because I selected Malaysia when I'm downloading this Revit 2020. So I go into it. So this is all the library, this is all the furniture component that you can find for the Revit. So if you go in here, you have all your furniture component for you to put into your model. So if I want to have, if I want to put in my uh, people, you have either male or female, I can go to entourage and this is my male and female. So I can put them in, load them into my project and I just click OK you okay, can just put them in here so let me have a few them I can just put in a camera view here to here and I'll be able to view them so if you look down here I'll be, now I'm in a hidden visual style hidden hidden line so to view them I can just change it to realistic and the software itself will generate out the graphic so I can see that there are, there's a guy standing here with a table so if I want to change it to consistent color you just have a standard shading to it okay one thing about this ray trace you if you are you should not be clicking on it so it's not because that you cannot click on it but because this is gonna render all the shadows and lighting into your mod into a view so every time you change your view it will render again the shadow and the lighting so for for just normal viewing say you just set it to realistic then it's good enough so my view is my front view let me rename it something meaningful front desk view rename it to something meaningful it's always important in Revit to name all the view or all the things 
that you do to something that is meaningful. So if you okay, so since you have since you have made a area and you have known the you have marked out the a the room and you have put in the name you have shaded it you will know the area how big you also want to know how how what's the dimension for the room so you can actually just put the dimension in from this tab you can align it and you will be able to create your dimension here Okay, so we because Revit is all about building smart, being able to construct everything with the uh, material takeoff. We have to we will be able to generate our schedule by just right clicking on it here. We can have a new schedule, so we can select what sort of schedule take material takeoff quantities that we want to have. So let in this case, let's uh, make a door schedule. Let's click OK on it. And we can have our cost count, fire rating, height. So Manufacture and model and that's it for now. I just click OK. So this is the door schedule. Okay. So let me open up the knock view. So to show that this schedule and this schedule is linked to your model you can split the window you can find it under this view or in this case you use a shortcut wt okay so Beauty, you'll be able to sorry about that my software like my laptop like so if you press wt this template you'll be able to split your views into two so you can see that i have one two three four five dot uh, six dots one three meter the rest is 2.1 meter so i can have the software count it for me so it this is uh, this tab here is representing here so if I miss were to miss out some of the few that I wanted I can add and minus as I like so now let me have a grand total of how much the how, how many do I have so instead of counting it manually I can just have the software count it out for me so since I didn't have the cost here I can I will have to add the cost so to make this model meaningful because it's all about sharing all the info that you have available so this is a 2 meter 2.1 meter height door I can add a fire rating of 2.5 hour and this is a cost of 500 I will click OK. The software is lagging again. <laughs> if I were to click OK, it should be generating the this value that I 
inputted into the door will be reflected at the door schedule here. So just give me a moment. Okay, so the cost here and the priority here are already are all generated out according to what I put into the tab. So if I were to click back into this door schedule, I can actually compute the total of this cost by going to the formatting cost align. So I go down to here. I can click on the calculate total. If I click on it, this will be one, two, three, four, five. It will be two thousand five hundred. So I do not have to manually add up this cost. Okay. One thing about this schedule is that if I were to delete this, this will reflect back to the schedule. As you can see here, the three meter height door is no more since I'm deleting, I have deleted this from my model. So if and all the changes I've made, the door schedule by itself will be able to update it by itself based on what you have done on your model. So let me close on it. Okay, the next thing is the drawing drawing sheet. So you go down to this project project browser, you have this sheet. So you can right click on it. You have can have a new sheet. Click OK on it. This will be a preset drawing sheet. So if you want to have different different drawing sheet, you can find it around through the library in Revit or you can download it from the net. So you can easily move the drawing to your this drawing sheet by just drag and click. And you can have your model straight away on here. So you notice that this detailing is quite large on my this drawing sheet, which is something that I don't want. I want to put more info on it so I can actually change the size change the scale of this viewport so this is like AutoCAD this is a viewport so this will any changes that you made on this viewport will be reflected back onto this drawing sheet here so I can move it like this so this is still too big for me another way is I can still selecting this viewport I can actually crop the view for now, I just click apply on it and I go back to my level 1 detailing. So now at this level 1 detailing, I still this crop view is already thick, but I need to still take this crop view region, I apply it, then I have this square. So using the same way to see how this uh, how this affect to my drawing sheet so just press the beauty and are we able to show you what happened when I change when, when I reduce the size of my view so if I click on this if I were to move it down then this will be reflected on my drawing sheet. So if I do not want to have my this dimension showing, I can actually just right click and hide this in the view. So now it's gone, but I can get it back by just showing the view again. Like this. Okay, by showing the view again, but I just I'm review the hidden object. So by pressing this light bar, I'll be entering the review hidden element mode. So I can actually just click on this, right click, and hide in view element. So I click back on this light bar, I'll be entering back into the, I'll be returned back to my mode. So this will be visible again. So let me go back to my drawing sheet. So now that I have reduced my size, 
I can move this at the corner and I can move my this detailing also. So I double I can double click on this. Oops. So likewise I can drop my 3D view here, the front desk here. So you notice that my 3D view and my front desk, both of them, only one of them is at realistic. So if I were to change my this view to realistic, it should reflect back to my drawing sheet. I can also put in my door schedule. This is to make my draw, construction drawing more meaningful. And also my level one. If I were to my level one drawing. So this might be where I want all my dimension to be. Crop it again. So as I crop it here, yes, I have this. There's also. So if I go to select it, up. So at the end of the day, I should be getting something like this for the assignment. Okay. So one more thing is about rendering so if let me go to this view so this is actually just a graphical representative if you actually want to make uh, have a very nice view um, Revit doesn't really work that well when you want to render something so you can actually render the image from the model by going to this teapot over here there will be a render button here so you can actually select the, the things that the lightings or the shadows and, and the background that you want the software to render so if you were to click on it the computer will take will use its power my own laptop will use its power to try to render this image another way you can use it is because student if you are using the student version, you will be able to upload your file and you will be able to use the Autodesk to render them for you. So you can send the file over and in 5 to 10 minutes, they can send the file back to you. So you don't have to use your computer to render, render the view that you want. So back to here. So, So I guess that's about it for the basic usage of Revit. So hope you guys understand how to use it. Okay, thank you.